Hey there, all you good people. I'm Joe from Joe's Computer Museum. On the last episode, I solved the mystery of my K-Pro 1. Or did I? Today I'll re-examine what I got wrong, show you how to back up K-Pro discs, and show you what it took to restore my K-Pro 1. Warm up the CRT, it's time for another episode. Before digging into hardware, I want to talk about the floppy disks that came with the machine. We know that they don't match this computer and will be useless when it's restored, but I would be remiss in my duties if I didn't back them up. What we learn from that process can also help us ensure that we know how to write floppy images downloaded from the internet. So if you want to skip to the hardware, just click that thing there to jump ahead. So let's talk about the backup process. KPros use pretty standard floppy technology, so we can use a DOS or Windows PC to copy and restore disk images. All you need is the right imaging software, the right hardware, and some luck. First, you'll need a PC that has an Ethernet card and a high-density 5 and a quarter inch floppy drive. Something that runs Windows 98 Second Edition should be good enough, because you can use an older version of the Opera browser and still surf to the image download sites reasonably well. Next, you'll need a program called Image Disk. I'll put a link to that in the description. This program allows you to back up just about any MFM encoded soft sector disk. Operating the program is pretty straightforward, but this is a case where you definitely want to RTFM. You really have to pay attention to detail and know your source disk format well. Knowing the disk's capacity, the number of tracks per inch, how many sides it has, and its original RPM and bitrate are vital to ensuring that you set up image disk correctly. Your K-Pro may vary, so my settings may not be the same you need to use. In any case, just in case you're curious, I'll list the settings I changed here. Pause if you want to read them. Then it's just a matter of running the program and dumping the disk to image files to be forever preserved. To ensure you've imaged your disks correctly, you'll want to write your freshly created image to a new blank floppy, then try it out on the K-Pro. If it fails, you have something wrong, and you'll want to go back and recheck your work. That's all there is to it. I promised on the last video that I'd get back to the floppy drives. Long story short, the spindle speed on the A drive is way too slow. You can hear the motor strain when you insert a floppy, and if you swap the A and B drives by switching the drive select jumpers, the B drive works just fine as an A drive. So let's see if I can speed up that old drive. It's a good exercise anyway, so that we know how to do it in case it ever comes up again. Floppy drives spin at a constant rate for a particular media. I won't bore you with 30 minutes of research, but suffice it to say, this K-Pro's drive spin at 300 RPM. To check if that speed is correct, you just need a strobe light and access to the bottom of the drive. Drives usually have a strobe disc on them, so when you spin them up and shine the right strobe light on it, the marks on the strobe disc will stand in place. If they move forward, the drive is too fast, and if they move backward, the drive is too slow. My first problem here is that my drives don't have strobe discs on them. No worries though, you can download a program to make your own strobe disc. I'll put a link in the description. But now I need a strobe light, something that blinks at the right frequency for my strobe disc. I tried a couple of phone apps, but they couldn't strobe the light reliably enough to do the job. So I resorted to a wee bit of Montgomery Scott engineering. I just used the face of an old alarm clock. The LEDs in most wall power devices strobe at your AC mains power frequency, and that happens to work perfectly in my case. This process proved that my drive was too slow. Sorry I don't have any video here, as I couldn't get it to record well enough. Trust me though, it was way off. Usually, floppy drives have a variable resistor, also called a trimmer pot, that allows you to adjust or trim the speed of the motor. This floppy drive has a trimmer pot right on top, but it doesn't adjust the drive speed. I actually don't know what it adjusts. Since that doesn't seem to do anything, I figured I might as well take the entire drive apart to get to the guts and lubricate the motor, since the noise coming from it is the real indicator of what's going on here. We have a bound up motor. The downside is that no matter what I tried, it could not get to the motor bearing to lubricate it. The upside is that I found the trimmer pot! It's on the underside of the motor controller board! To trim this correctly, I have to have the motor running while I turn the pot. This means running the drive while it's in pieces. After a few minutes of trial and error, I got the drive trimmed. It only took turning the pot all the way to maximum, but it did the job. Drive spins. Wait for that to warm up. Good. Let's put it in and see what we get. The drive seemed to work just fine, but after a couple days, it stopped working and was slower than ever. It's dead, Jim. Damn it. It's OK, Bones. We won't leave this K-Pro with the wrong drives in it. 
it's time they were replaced with the right ones. But let's get back to the hardware, because it seems we haven't solved the mystery yet. Remember this? Some dits labeled the disk wrong. Well, it turns out the dits was actually me. First off, the disk is not labeled incorrectly. It really is a K-Pro Roman numeral 2 disk. All of the utilities on that disk say they are for that machine. Details are important, folks. Don't be like me. Speaking of detail, let's look at those motherboard images from the last video. Notice anything different? That's right, these boards don't match. That's error number two. Let me show you another K-Pro board. This one is from another K-Pro 1. So it looks like I really do have a K-Pro 1 board in this machine, but something still isn't right. Let's look again. Yep, mine has the wrong ROM chip in it. It's not even the correct density. Strike three. And what else did I miss? My boot screen isn't a K-Pro 1 boot screen. It's something else entirely. And that's number four. So it turns out that I identified the board incorrectly. My K-Pro has the right board, but the wrong ROM. There's only one way we can test that out. To the ROM programmer! Basically, we have to dump this ROM chip to a file, download every known K-Pro ROM from the internet, and then run a comparison tool to figure out which ROM my K-Pro has in it. And which one does it happen to be? It's number 81-292-A. That's a generic ROM image that works on several K-Pros, notably the 2 84. That machine also uses the same motherboard as the K-Pro 1, so you can basically swap the ROM between those two machines freely and you'll get a generally functional machine. So what's the final verdict here? I have a real K-Pro 1 motherboard, a K-Pro 2 84 ROM, single side floppy drives, all loaded into a K-Pro 1 chassis, and completely wrong disks that are somehow compatible with both the ROM and the drives. What happened with this machine? I mean, it's an outright bloody mess. All my previous theories have just gone out the window. I mean, there's no reason to swap the ROM chip just to change the floppy drives. And the same thing in the reverse, there's no reason to swap the floppies to change the... I don't know. The only thing I can think of is that this thing was fo Frankensteined in order to repair another K-Pro or something like that. I have no idea. Now that I know what I really have, I gotta make things right and restore this K-Pro 1 to its original condition. Should be a piece of cake. I just need the right ROM image, a blank EEPROM, my trusty ROM programmer, and double side, double density, half height floppy drives. Let's focus on the ROM. Here's the chip from my K-Pro. It's a 2732 EEPROM, a 4 kilobyte chip you can erase with ultraviolet light. The correct image, 81-478A, is an 8 kilobyte image, so it won't fit on this chip. I can't just erase this one and burn the correct firmware to it, so I need to get a different chip. What I need here is a 2764 compatible chip, which supports 8K of memory space. No problem, I got one of those, and I got one of these, so I should be set. Just burn the chip, put it in the machine, and test it out. Does it post? It sure does. Now we have to test the original K-Pro 1 master disk image. Let's pop that puppy in and see if it boots correctly. Success. Now all I need are the right drives and I'll be in business. Just one trip to eBay and a week worth of waiting and here we have it. A fully restored K-Pro 1, working the way it was intended to. Wow, what a learning experience that was! Figuring out boards and ROMs, floppies and drives, it was amazing! But I'm not done yet. Now that the machine has been restored, it's time to play with it. Can we use it as a Unix terminal? What about original applications? That's next up in this series. Well, that's all for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button or subscribe, and remember, 8 bits are all you need. I got this came from 2007 or 2008 or so. Uh, a local guy called into our computer shop and uh, he was looking to get rid of an old computer. He's wondering if we recycle computers. And I happened to ask him, so what kind of computer it was? Because, you know, I'm always on the lookout for something. Uh, that for years, I've always thought has been easier for me. Uh, just the mental logic in my head says, hey, this will probably take less time and less effort, so let's do it this way. But I never really done the math to see if that's correct. So today, we're going to uh, do the actual math. Since I'm a man of science, let's, uh, let's actually...
It's okay, Bones. We won't leave this K-Pro with the wrong drives in it. It's time that we were replaced. It's time they were replaced. Why can't I remember the lines? They're right in front of me. They're right in front of me.